everybody, welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan. Today we're playing as the wonderful Khmer Civilization, but not as you've seen them before. No, what are all these abilities? Slightly different, slightly reworked. Reworked by Socrates, you might say? Yes. This is a modded, reworked version of Khmer that looks like a lot of fun. A very different take on them, but a very similar playstyle nonetheless. Six players, wetland map with all of these details, deity difficulty, standard speed with no game modes. My mission today is quite simple. Big. Go big. Big, big cities. Hopefully with at least 20 population. Then, only then, will we thrive and retake the crown that the Khmer Empire truly deserves. Remember ladies and gentlemen, if you fancy playing with this start that has an absolute bunch of marsh and a very dangerous looking volcano, you should come to Discord where I keep the save files and all of the gameplay mods that I have that you will see in my videos, including all of the user interface mods, like this one and the one up here, and all the ones that people keep asking me for, all in Discord. Discord friends, all in Discord. So sit back, relax, let's go. But before we get started today, this is Ursa Bear. Ursa Bear was expelled from Oxford University's Civ 6 program. Sad, alone, scared, Ursa Bear made his way to the fabled promised land, the University of Sankor. But unfortunately, the vampire, Lord Sucklington, refused to let Ursa Bear attend without 50,000 signatures on his application to enroll. So Ursa Bear travelled. Whilst looking for subscribers, Ursa Bear was trapped by crabs, and the evil Crustus the Enraged all seemed lost. Ursa Bear would go no further. He had failed. But then, to the east, they arrived. The early bears, freeing Ursa Bear from crabtivity. The early horde marched straight to the University of Sankor, screeching, Huzzah! At the doors till Lord Sucklington had no option but to let Ursa Bear in. He had done it. With the early bear's help, he had enrolled. Thank you, everyone. You really do make dreams come true. Now all Ursa Bear has to do is pass his first year, but I'm sure that'll be fine. Right? Turn one. I'm looking at this start. It is a start fraught with danger. Firstly, if I wanted to go and utilize all of these 2-2 two -two tiles down to myself, including all of the maze down here, we have to go near the scary volcano, which we might regret immediately. If we stay put, we have an absolute abundance of marsh, which might come in very handy later into the game. And actually, there are a lot of 2-2 two -two tiles around, a lot of wood around, two sources of spice, a long river that I'm going to need for later. It's both a really good and a really weird start the same time. Now, this is a grassland hill. In fact, apart from this one over there, they're all grassland hills. So if I settle on them, they're not going to be particularly useful. However, the advantage to starting on this tile is that, well, it's not right next to a volcano, which a starts go is not what I would be considering asking for too much, but you know, it, it is a start. What could I do? I could move down here. That would be next to the volcano, which would be danger. I could move away, but this is towards the tundra and it would take me away from this fourth food tile. It's not ideal, but I think my best two opportunities are probably either going to be crossing the river or staying put. Now let me move my warrior down a little bit and see what we've got going in this direction. Lots of mountains. Good for holy sites, not necessarily for much else. I might regret this, but I'm going to settle in place. I know, I know, controversial, but here we are. We've got this lovely four food tile working immediately. I'll try and produce a scout. We'll see if we can figure out what astrology is. I'll press next turn and we'll have a little talk about why this is a reworked mod. Now, Kemmer is one of my favorite civilizations to play in Civ 6. Really, really good. Very, very good at culture. Very, very good at growth, but more importantly, good at faith. And I like a good faith game. This is a different version of them. What hasn't changed? Well, generally speaking, the battle trebuchet elephant is exactly the same. And the Prasat building, the unique temple replacement, is pretty similar as well. This gives half a culture for every population in a city and a bunch of tourism if you get the city over certain population milestones. Then it gets a little bit different. We have a unique aqueduct district, which I believe, a little bit like the Iceland mod we saw a few series ago, this does not need to be put next to a city centre. This can go anywhere. However, it must be on flat land, and it gives two housing, one amenity. It gives an extra housing to adjacent farms and wanders, and adjacent farms receive an additional two food and one faith. So basically, you want to do exactly the same thing. You want to plonk it down, put farms around it. It's just a little bit clunkier to use, or it's a little bit better. I mean, the aqueduct was always a 
weird one to use with Kemma anyway. Then we have our leader ability. Holy sites receive a standard adjacency bonus from rivers and also provide one population, one housing if their adjacency bonus is at least plus three when built. Now that's just a little bit of a mouthful. The thing you need to realize is that now it's a standard bonus for a river, not a major bonus. That is bad. However, if we can make a plus three holy site like this one, for instance, with woods, mountain, and a river, and upon finishing it, it will give me a population and a housing. Just as a one-off bonus, but a three population when you build a holy site is pretty cool. No food from a holy site though, so there's a little bit of a difference there. Cities with a plus four adjacency bonus or greater holy site receive one faith for every population. That's the aqueduct bonus, but it's been moved to plus four on holy sites. Bit weird, but cool. And then we have the Khmer ability full stop. Now this is in two parts. We get 15% production towards wonders in cities with at least 10 population and 30% if we have 20 population. 20 pop cities are going to be wonder building machines. We, we really want to see them. And then we have a really cool domestic trade route. Domestic trade routes provide one food, one production, one gold, and one faith for each palace, wonder, holy site, or beret in the destination city. This is a Magnus playthrough. And I think if we get a capital with all four of those things and in a few wonders, we can get some huge internal trade routes. This is not going to be a game like you've seen before, but population will be key here. Now, as you can see from Lake Redfer, we are also using the Terra Mirabilis mod, which is a really, really good mod that changes up all of the natural wonders in the game. I just, I'm really enjoying it. It's giving different things of the game I just haven't seen before. And any civilization that owns at least one of these tiles receives plus two gold for each unique copy of a luxury resource that they own. That's quite a small bonus, but it's quite cool. And it's right next to my land. Hey, that's awesome. That is a barb. Ugh, fine. I guess we'll go and just deal with barbs <laughs> rather than exploring. It's fine. I didn't need to explore. Well, I can't see any sign of the barbarians. Oh, I can see signs of the barbarians. I'm going to go and see if I can fortify on a wood. Yeah. Oh, there's a tundra, a violent storm heading west. We might be all right. Right, let's go on to this tile. I'll fortify on it and maybe we can hold off the assortment of barbs. Nope, the scouts have already been informed and barbarians are fully on their way to me. Love it. I'm not even going to try and hold this choke point. It's not going to work. Let's fall back to my capital. The scout will go south. I'll put one turn into a monument, but honestly, does it even matter? Probably not. I've got so little production in this start. We're not going to be able to rush a very quick profit. So I don't know what religion we're going to get today. I can't guarantee we're going to get Feed the World or Work Ethic or anything like that. We're just going to have to see what's given to us by the end of the game. Another Barb Scout. Wonderful. Yeah, we've we've got scouts everywhere. We've got at least three barbarian camps on me already. We're going to have to actually start building a slinger. I can't afford to put my holy site on the tile I want it to. It's the only plus three that I can see right now. So instead, we're going to have to open up with animal husbandry, going into archery. Yeah, this is actually going to be a very slow production start. Someone just attacked that scout down there, though. Who's that? Woolen. One extra production towards this slinger takes me from three production to four production. That is an insanely helpful start. Yes. Thank you, Woolen, for coming to save me. Okay, the barb is now attacking the city center. That's fine. Discipline. God King. Let's get the Pantheon. Move you out of the city center. If they want to attack me on this tile, you certainly can. Oh, I'm just still attacking the city center. Fine. I'd rather level this unit up. So can you attack my warrior rather than my city? I'd be very kind. There's the barb camp. Alrighty. Maybe Woolen will actually try and take this on with this warrior. Nope. They're going to run away bravely. All right. Fine. I'll leave it alone for now. I don't have the units to be dealing with this. Not right now. <laughs> Already. Already at four population. My lord. If only I could do something with this city, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We'll get tiles in a second. I would rather take this maze than the incense, I must say. But we'll see what naturally spreads to me. I want this tile. Then I can buy this holy site and we can go from that. Animal husbandry. Horses? Source of horse. And we got the incense. Ah, it's a little bit annoying. But I will work that tile because we'll get a pantheon a little bit quicker, at least. Major flood. We've lost a population already to a flood. Yep, it's going to happen quite a lot on this map, I feel. What's in my tribal village? Just experience. Okay, that's not the best. I could have done with a relic. I could have done with a builder. We could have done with loads of cool stuff. There's the boost to archery anyway. We've got one slinger up. We need 130 gold to unlock this tile. That is a lot. Put a couple more turns into a monument and then we'll go from there. Venice has been found by somebody else. Interesting. Bronze working boosted. Upgrade gained. We've actually beat the barbarians back really effectively here. Didn't think it'd be possible, but we've done it. Battle cry. Huzzah! Congo! Oh dear, somebody else who likes to grow very big cities and really doesn't like 
like people on the same continent as them. Oh well, sure that won't be a problem going into the late game. Oh, somebody's gone for profit points already. Yeah, we're not going to really have much choice on a religion here. We're just going to have to take what we're given. Bam, bam. Right, we might be able to go and take out this encampment now. In the meantime, buy the tile, buy the tile. Holy sight. Get it built. 16 turns. This will give Angkor Thom an extra population. It'll give me an extra housing. It's all wonderful. I could do with some more production, but when we get a monument going, that will help there. Archery. Done. Pottery. Get it done. No joke. The barbs just spawned two more units right there. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Big desert between me and Congo. That's not the worst thing, you know? Just stops them from wanting to drift lazily in my direction. Sling has chosen to move independently from the warrior. That's good. Right, we just push them back nicely. Moving round to here. One attack, two attack. Bam. We're in on the camp. Cheesy Pantheon, we have two choices. The way I see this, we have two choices. Either we lean in to the theming on rivers. Kimmer, of course, do like to put their holy sites next to a river for the adjacency, but there's no other thing pulling them to the rivers. River goddess would give me two amenities and two housing if I were to do that. That would make all my cities really happy. Or reeds and marshes could turn this start into an actual production start. I've got already four marshes in my land, which is crazy. Now, I was leaning away from this pantheon because I actually fancied getting Magnus in. If I could get Magnus into this playthrough, what I could do was chop it all out and go for a 20 pop city as quickly as possible. However, there is also the Etimananki start and that would be an outrageous start if I could pick this up. So mm, I'm going to go Reeds and Marshes and try and go to Mananke. I, I physically can't stop myself. But if we just let that all tweak in and I'll take the focus of that, you can see now we're working a 3-2, a 3-2, a 3-2, a 4-2. And we'll buy this for another 4-2 in a second. That is some crazy yield. We've gone from having 3 to 4 production to 10.8. Oh yeah, that's pretty fun. I like that. Well, let's try and get to Mananke. This is going to be a one city setup for the foreseeable future. I'm going to just push into getting a large magna setup and then go from there. You can see the spim is likely to attack me, but I am defended in a forest and I'm fortified. I reckon we can probably survive that attack. Go for archer and then look to just attack and defend here. Yeah, look at this. Get the scout to do a little bit of damage. Go on then. You just try and get through. Holy site is finished. Three faith per turn. We got a three population. We got a three housing. Now at some point we need every single holy site on our empire to be plus four minimum. And then we get six extra thief per turn, which is a big, big number. I don't think I can mess around right now. I think I'm going to have to go for an army. I'm just going to get four turns into a builder just to work these two improvements. That will give me the craftsmanship boost. Then we get a gogi, then we can spawn some archers. I think I might actually need a bit of an army here. Stay in your corner. I, I, I am trying. I am trying to stay in my corner, okay? The, the barbs are making this very difficult. Major flood. Everything's broken. Everything's damaged, including my holy site. Oh, and I lost the population. That was my three population, by the way. It's already dead. It's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get my population back if I fix my holy site? I probably shouldn't, but I wonder if that's been coded into the game. You never know. Sometimes. Sometimes weird things can bypass. Well, we'll just see how this one goes. Oh, there's another Barb Scout just coming in. Delightful. There's irrigation boosted. And Barb Camp defeated. Everyone home? Everyone home? No, we didn't get the free pop back. So we lost a population to the flood. Never to be seen again. What you gonna do? I think I've actually lost my three housing as well. Yeah, look. I've got back to six housing again. Five from water, one from my palace. So unfortunately, the flood destroyed my holy side. And when I fixed it, the game hasn't given the bonus back. That's a shame. That's a shame. Okay, that's good to know though. Holy sites on flood plains, not a good sort of combination. <laughs> Writing. Done. It's been Anki. I need you finished and I need you done ASAP. Doesn't really matter where I put it in this city, but I'm going to use it on probably the worst tile that I can replace right now is this one. Bam. Just be done. If we can get this one I can convert this terrible start into something that actually works really well. We'll see, we'll see if we can pull this around. One improvement, bam. We've taken advantage of the natural land, of course we have. All right, you, Mr. Barb, you need to go away. Please leave me alone. I am done with barbarians and Mr. I'm just finishing this monument really quickly. It was two turns out of the Etiman Anki. Oh, Oracle's already built. I realize it's already turn 46. We are not even that ahead of the groove when it comes to building wonders. So someone might steal Etiman Anki from me here. 
yep, that doubled my culture per turn, which means I can go to early empire as quick as I can. Actually, ignore that. Go craftsmanship and then into corvée as quick as I can. Normal age. I actually wouldn't have minded a dark age there because we could have used my holy science to get a bunch more science. But hey, you can't ask for everything. So much marsh around this start. I think Getaman Anki is absolutely the play. If we can pull this off, this would be brilliant. For inquiry, we need to go golden into the medieval era. Otherwise, Earth is going to be very disappointed. Eastern Orthodoxy has been founded. Feed the world has been taken. I'm actually not going to get a religion here. Now, here's the thing. Does that matter? Does that matter? There's nothing I see here on my abilities that mean I've got to have my own religion. I could just take somebody else's religion, right? So we could go for feed the world and just use it if somebody else were to bring it to me or work ethic or, or whatever. I mean, four religions right now. This is second religion, third religion, and Congo is going to go fourth. I'm not even going to get the fourth religion. I'm going to play this the weirdest you have ever seen. I'm going to play this as a Kemmer, no religion of your own run. Someone else is going to give me their religion and I'm going to love it. <laughs> This already feels really strange. All quiet on the barb front now. Luckily, Woolen defeated this barb camp for me and one to my north as well. So we don't really have a lot to be worried about. I feel this uneasy silence, this quietness that just puts me off. State workforce. Conscription for a tiny bit more gold. Hey, seven gold rather than six gold is like a 15% increase. <laughs> it's huge. And rather than 12 to 13 production with my urban planning, I think I'll get fractionally more with the Corvée card um, or not. Nope, I think the other card was actually better. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'm not going to be chopping out the marsh anymore. We want to keep it, right? I still think Magnus is the choice for me here because I would like the extra growth in the city. I'd like the ability to bring uh, settlers into the game without losing pop. I think that's more important than going Pingala at the beginning stages of this game. I could Armani tour, but Woolen is the only city state for me. So I think I'm actually going to bypass it this game. We're going to go Magnus. Very weird. This is a very strange game, but it's got to play it as you feel it, you know? Pyramids finished. Oh, every time I see somebody finish anything, I get a little bit paranoid. Leave my wonder alone. Leave it out of this. Congo massively forward settling towards me and immediately putting walls in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Congo. It's a shame for you that because ultimately the thing you've got to remember is that I'm going to get battle elephants at some point and I'm not going to be happy with you and I may treat myself to a little bit of an early game war. I might do. Governor titles available. Do we get provision in first or do we get the growth? I think I'm going to get the actual growth first, surplus logistics because we can get a granary into this city really quickly. God, so many wonders have been built but my one hasn't. We're one turn away. Please let me have it. Please let me have it. Oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> to Menenki. Two science, one production to all marsh tiles in my empire. So with my pantheon, a marsh is now worth two science and three production. Huge. Most importantly though, one science and one production to all floodplain tiles in this city actually means that a bunch of the tiles I was already working are now really, really good. We've gone from six science to 17. That's cool. That's really cool. Get the granary sorted. ASAP. Granary finished in this city. Now let's pump out two builders. Make sure we get both of these sources of incense worked. All of these farms around here, we need everything improved as quickly as possible. Wheel. Water mill. Very handy. I might pick that up as quickly as I can as well. Minus two amenities can't do. Let's get at least one of those improved. Actually, to be fair, oh, no, we can't even sell it. Congo already has it, but maybe we can find something the world will buy at some point. <sighs> I can't believe it, Congessa. This is what I'm going to be doing. One, two, three, four, five cities all around me, about seven tiles away from my capital. We're going big. We're going tall cities today. Big population, huge yields. That is the aim of the game. And all of the improvements I'm putting down is increasing the amount of housing the city's got, which will help me in the long run. Get the build done. Get the ancient walls done. That will boost engineering. Then we can get my barrier down. I should get some settlers going as soon as possible. I'm just focusing on one city for a second. I, I can't tell you why. Well, actually, no, I can tell you why. I've been meaning to get another governor in and make sure that I've got provision in. That might be the play here. Yeah. All right. Finish the builder. Get the government plaza finished there. That'll turn the holy site into a plus four. Although, oh, I see I bought the tile already. The problem with that is it's also a floodplain and I don't like floodplains. Floodplains to me at the moment are being mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think I've got to go for it. Maybe we'll just try and go Great Bath. I'll put a regular uh, dam in on that tile as soon as possible. There you go. We're committed. We've committed. Sometimes you can just faff around with a plan. You don't commit to anything. You just you just start spinning in circles and nothing ever happens. Mega Colossal Eruption. Ooh, that's removed a lot of wood. That's not good for my holy site. Don't do that. A source of horse, you say? Delicious. That's not even a good enough tile to work. But at least I've now got some horses coming in. I might be able to sell those to Congo for just a little bit of spare cash. Okay, now we need to settle wide. Provision. No population loss in this city anymore. That's awesome. Ancient walls. Settler, 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 settler. <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing right now. This feels like a strange move, but I'm actually going to chop down this forest. Um, I've only got one charge, so I can't put a mine down immediately, but I just feel like this volcano is going to explode and remove the forest at some point, so I might as well chop it now. That finishes engineering because I've now got a wall, and as good as this farm triangle is, I'm thinking my barrow. One housing, one amenity. Huh, it says two housing, one amenity, and it says one, one below. I wonder if that adds up. I don't know, but I'm thinking of putting it on this tile because then it will give one housing and two food and one faith to this farm, this farm, this farm. I think that's really good. It's kind of removing one semi-decent tile to put another really good one down, and then I'll get the water mill down. Look, I know I'm, I'm basically putting off getting settlers out, but there's just stuff that's chaining. It's chaining and chaining and chaining and chaining, and we've just got to run with it. Congo has gone to war with Wulin. That's always slightly worrying. Don't worry. I'm not perturbed. Congo has all world wonders provide for faith. That is a terrible religion. Do not try and spread that to me. Actually, water mill. Nah, can't be bothered. But look at the district. Oh my goodness, that's really pretty. Especially next to the volcano. <laughs> oh, I like this. And look at this tile. Seven food, three production, two science, one faith, all in one tile. Oh yes, and we've actually got 16 housing in this city now because we've got an extra housing from this, this, this and this. It also gives it to the wonder. Amazing. Right, 45 gold spent. Let's immediately get the Settler card in. Conscription is still doing kind of half a job. Settler expansion time. You go to there. You go to there. Settle wide. Settle far. Don't know if I mentioned, but now that I've got a plus four holy site, I'm now getting nine faith per turn just from the holy site. So the aqueduct effect is now kicking in, or as you might have expected it from previous games. First settler. Done. Down you go. This is where we mass settle. No, Congo. I was just about to settle there. Why did you plonk there? Oh, that's frustrating. Fine. Right. Well, we can just kick the city back one tile, but that is really annoying. Stop it. This is the sacrifice play we made from getting Etamananki, but I don't mind this. I think we made the right choice. I really do. Another eruption has just gone. I've got 10 population in the same city. That's pretty cool. Yeah, as this volcano keeps blowing up, actually. <laughs> Remind me not to annoy that volcano. That's That's got uh, some anger issues. We might even go to a dark age again. I, I, medieval golden age is normally so easy. What's going on? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know. Political philosophy. I'm going to do a really weird thing today. I'm going to go autocracy. I'm going to take 10% production towards wonders and I'm going to go for the extra yields. I never do this, but I think having big tall capitals is the way to play. So we're going to try that. Diplomatic league or charismatic leader? What's the best play there? I think just going for the points. I haven't met any other city states right now. So Charismatic leader, colonization, urban planning, a little bit more production. There's the second settler. Right, here we go. We're now starting to mass settle. This is good. If we could unlock the Prasat as fast as possible. Now that would be a really, really good introduction. Woolen has dished the dirt on Congo here. Very much just pushing them back. Lake Retba has given me some era score. Very good to see. Very good to see. Let's get the builder done. And already we're working a 4-3-2 tile. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, you're not going to like us. But you're already attacking Woolen. I don't think think you're to be trusted. There's the volcano. There's the volcano. Seven fertilized tiles. That's pretty cool. It broke apart that farm and has dished a lot of different yields around. One population lost. Yeah, that, that kind of checks out. Annoyingly, it's got rid of both the resource and the marsh. <laughs> now that, that is harsh. Take off settlers for a second then. Let's go. Builder, water mill. We'll think about it from there. Do you want to put a trader up very soon? Because I can get some super trade routes already. My capital has a palace, a wonder, a holy site, and a barrow. So I should be getting plus four on all of the domestic routes. Yeah, that's plus eight food. Oh my lord. Yeah. Okay, fine. We need to get 
that trade route going quickly as possible. Let's do it. Just remember that. One food, one production. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now we can do better than that. Oh, Woolen. That is first suzerain on them. We've only got three turns and it's only six. Only six zero score we need. Oh, Woolen's got far too much army. Otherwise I could levy that galley, but no. This might be a forward saddle again. Yeah, that's one era score. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this, but I mean this. Watch, watch the yields on this city. It's just going to go boom. And suddenly everything, everything is ready to go. Two turns, four era score needed. Uh, we just don't have the gold. I've got no one to trade with. This is my problem. Congo doesn't really want anything I've got. She won't give me that much gold as well. So we're, we're low on ideas. I, there's nothing I can do. I can't levy. Can't get any era score from war. We can't do anything along these lines. No, I, we were a bit scuppered at the moment, but that's okay. Looks like here come the missionaries. All right. Oh, another normal edge. What is this game? This is just a weird game and I don't mind it. It's, it's, it's good fun to play something a little bit different, but my lord, it feels very strange. Okay, the water mill is an anchor farm now. Dedication we need. I might go for another three inquiry here. We've got it. We're like, I'm going to make a concerted effort this time around. We really do need to make sure that we get the golden age next time around. The Congo might come for me here, but I'm actually going to go for them. I'm going to build a few catapults and we're going to actually look to do a bit of upgrading into my battle elephants. For only 200 production, to be fair. I can hit those out pretty quick. I don't really have the gold. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted just to push out and take a few cities. If you give me a battle elephant, I'm going to use it. That's the rule. Siege. Let me do more damage with siege. Yes. Melee. Ah. Oh, boo. This feels a little bit strange, but I'm going to actually focus on going for a commercial hub before I go for much else because these trade routes are so good. I need to make sure I get a ton of them. We can go straight for military engineering. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going straight for battle elephants. I can't resist myself. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just can't do it. I don't feel I should have to as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go for it. Congo's at war with one of the other players we haven't met yet. Good to know. Means that we don't have to fight them by ourselves, should we decide to fight them. My first lumber mill, I believe. Yep. And then I get a second one here as well. There's a battering ram on the way. We're only two turns away from elephants. It's just too much fun. I can't, I can't be given a game with battle elephants and not use them. I keep saying this, but it's true. And it's all melted. I just fixed all this. I literally just fixed all this. Oh, I know what people are going to be saying. Get Liang in. No, 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 we can't do that. No, no, no. Military engineering. And here we go. Let's start producing some of these magnificent creatures. Oh no, scrap that. It's, uh, it's all being blown up again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone. It's all gone. Never mind. Don't worry. I'm sure if we just keep fixing it, nature will give up, right? That's how it works. Theology. Oh, a little bit more faith. I don't know why I need the faith for turns. To be honest, I probably don't. We'll grab it anyway. The market is almost ready to go. We'll get another trade route going as soon as we can. Here is an iron mine. There's iron working and apprenticeship boosted. Double boosts. All of the era score. All of the wonderments all flowing out at once. This is good. One turn from Battle of the Con. Finish. Finish. Oh, no. <laughs> Everything is going wrong. This is totally my fault. The settling here in the first place. Oh, the holy site needs fixing and my brain is fixing. All right, let's just finish this one elephant. Come on. Here it is. It's a unique elephant. It's wonderful. Got a huge ballister on its back. What more do you need from an elephant? The elephant comes rumbling in. We got to Claire War next turn. I've only got one elephant and one scout at the moment. It's not exactly the biggest and bravest of teams. But hey, when you've got an elephant with a trebuchet on it's back. Do you really need more? I like to argue the answer is no. Plus, I'm just saving up. I'm saving up my gold. Woolen is almost ready to go. Yes, I will declare war on you. Thank you for bringing this up. That, that, oh, you've saved me so much time. 600 gold, 635 woolen needed. Okay. First of all, let's bring Mr. Scout in. Battering ram in. I've got the warrior making its way down. That's good. And the battle elephant can actually move. And it would be able to fire if it didn't move onto a hill. It's, it's unlikely that one elephant alone is going to be enough, but I'm moving my unit in. Oh, 35 damage to the elephant. Come now. And another flood. That feels excessive. That feels like an excessive amount of damage. Bam. Reinforcements are on the way. Don't worry. Yeah, one elephant wasn't quite enough. It wasn't quite enough. We're not going to be able to even run away from here. <laughs> 
Never mind. I'll upgrade more troops. We've got reinforcements on the way. Oh no, I actually would have survived. I am on one health out of a hundred. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh, there's a single man at arms anyway, as my scout comes round to try and flank and destroy this aqueduct. Scout took a big hit there, but it just absorbed the damage for a second. Can now run away, as we now have this. And another trader. It's going to have every city sending a nice little trader to my capital. Plus four harbor, you say? Oh, yes, please. That sounds lovely. Magnus, I don't know. I don't need you in here anymore. Let's send you to my southern city and then Pingala. It is a 15 or soon to be 15 population capital. I might as well use it for its strength, eh? Actually, what am I doing? No, the trade routes. The trade routes get worse if I take Magnus out of the... Ca Ugh. Change my mind. Pingala instead. Get down to this city. Go on. I'll figure out a consistent plan of what I want to do at some point in this game. It's just, to be honest, I'm just having a bit of fun. This is quite enjoyable. Hungry. We knew you existed for a little while, but it's an honor to meet you anyway. Are you still at war with Congo? Is that you that was at war with Congo? No. Would you like to be at war with Congo? They sort of would, you know. What about for a little bit of a luxury? Uh, it's quite expensive. All right. Don't don't worry about it. We'll we'll just sell you everything like this for now. Well, bam. Oh, Okay, finally the city walls are down. That's good. Okay, this is not working. This is not working. They've now pulled all of their troops back and I don't have enough elephants. It's fine. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to make peace. I'm, I'm going to learn from the fact that this attack is just rubbish. It's rubbish. I tried to take a single elephant in. You know, I, I, I was just trying to be a little cheeky. Cheeky just didn't work out. Give ourselves 10 turns and we'll come back with a bigger army. If we can come back with a really, really big army, including, because I've got all this faith spare, a great general, should be able to just push through really, really easily. Plus, we now have a lot of infrastructure where we didn't before. So this is really cool. We get the Prasat done. Get a Corsa done. We'll save up some gold. We'll be able to afford Woolen. Don't beat your head against the wall for no reason, you know? Just give yourself a moment. Come back later. City center buildings. And can I get culture bombs, please? Go on, you know you want to. Yes. It did know it wanted to. That's amazing. Okay, so we can culture bomb. I'll think of something fun that I can do with that. Which I could already think of something fun. Is that a plus three? It's a plus three holy site. And I can just bomb all of these tiles away from Congo. Oh yeah, okay, that's that's absolutely what I want to do. Like, so yeah, we'll finish this courser off quickly and then we'll go from there. I love that as an idea. My Prasat will give me another seven and a half culture in my capital, something like that. Excellent. Oh, this is a good city now. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a funny point in the series. This is a point where I give you a little bit of a view behind the scenes for today is a new recording day. Everything you saw in this series up till this point was done in one recording session. A session that took place yesterday and looking back I didn't quite realize how how do I put this under the weather and out of it I was feeling <laughs> now sometimes this happens ladies and gentlemen you just wake up in a day and you're fighting through something you don't know what it is could be a bit of illness could be a bit of lack of sleep could just not have your mind in the game full stop whatever it is it's not until I stepped away took a bit of a break and came back today where I looked back and went oh lord I was really out of it this game this game is spiraling out of control but that's okay sometimes it happens you might be able to look at this and there was a part of me that looked back at the last recording session and said, let's just scrap it. No one need know. But then I was thinking, no, this is the perfect opportunity for me to show you, ladies and gentlemen, how you bring a game back under control. Have I created my own disaster save? It's not quite a disaster, but certainly things aren't as they should be. So let's just do a very quick recap of where we are on turn 121 and what we can do to turn this game around. This sieve is all about holy sites and getting your cities to 20 population. It's all about building your unique district and getting trade routes to your capital. We've not really managed to do any of that. My capital is still population 15 and has housing capped. That's no good. Two of my cities don't have holy sites. Two of my cities don't have extra trade routes. I had a war. I lost the war. I had to go and lick my wounds and we still have five turns until we can declare war again. I have six turns on the era and I need eight era score to get a golden age which I desperately need but we are so far unable to even think about getting. For whatever reason I built the warlord's throne. I'm not entirely sure why I built that. Maybe I expected to take this city and then go on a bit of a domination run, but this is not what has happened so far. I even failed to get my own religion. It, I mean, everything that could have gone wrong has absolutely gone wrong, but we can pull this game back together. First of all, I really, really need to start settling out. Yes, a battle elephant would be a good idea, but I've got two of them, and this time I'm going to take all of Woolen's troops into battle. So we've got more of an army. We've also got a great general. This helps. So I need to settle out and make sure that we have exploited all of the land 
land we're going to get. So let's do that. One settler, two settler. Although we could gamble on a golden age into the Renaissance era. Now that would mean that we could use monumentality and I could use some faith to do this. I prefer that. That instead means that I can work on infrastructure. One of the main ways I'm going to get that is with more trade routes. So the capital is going to now work on a commercial hub, which I'm going to go and put up in the frozen north because these towers are useless and they're not going to give me anything. But this will help me to get another trade route. I have the World Congress giving me culture bombs at the moment and I totally forgot about it. But there are things that I can do with this. Now I am saving gold. Don't worry, I'm not going to use all of my gold, but I'm going to buy this tile. And this city, after it finishes the Corsa, is going to drop a beret onto this tile. So I'm not going to rush that one through first. This will culture bomb all of the tiles around this area. And I can then go one, two, three. Three farms stolen from Woolen, a city-state that doesn't need them. And this will give me a huge amount more housing, more food. This will turbocharge the Pingala city massively. On the same point, there is an opportunity to put a beret down and steal some cattle from the AI. Now, the advantage of doing this would be that I'd have an opportunity to attack the city directly. But what I think I'm going to do is actually build an encampment on this tile. This, again, is going to culture bomb. It will steal two tiles, and it'll mean that I can put a siege equipment inside this city and not have it attacked, which will give me a permanent base to attack from. That's that's really cool. I like that. Era score is a problem. Era score is a problem. However, one way we're going to get around this is to buy building a galley. That's two era score. We have an opportunity to pick up a merchant in a second. I also want to make sure that I build some arches. I have one already, but I can build two more. So I'll build one, two in my capital, get those done quickly. That will give me the boost to machinery. So that's another point. When we go to war, I'll be able to levy woolen for 700 gold, which I can do, hopefully. I can just continue to sell things like, yep, perfect. We'll get our gold back quickly. I'm not worried about the gold. The gold will come in, but I now need six. A second galley would give me era score from shipbuilding. If we get to feudalism in that time, which hopefully I'll do, that'll help as well. There are lots of things we can do. Suddenly I feel like I've got a bit more of a plan. I'm also going to denounce the Congo so that I can hopefully go for a joint war against them with Hungary later into the game. I feel for the first time in a long time I have a bit of a plan now. That's good. We like a plan. Bam. Three era score on the harbour. I'd forgotten about that. I knew I'd set something up that was good. And look at this trade route to my capital. Annoyingly, when the holy site got pillaged, I think I lost a little bit of the food and production from these internal trade routes because I'm not getting the full benefit that I should be. Palace, wonder, holy site, beret. I have a beret, I have a holy site, I have a palace and I have a wonder. So I should be getting plus four on these trade routes, but it's only saying plus two. I think it's because both of these got pillaged and when I fixed them, they were never recovered or never fixed to their full extent. Yeah, that is that is a bit annoying. But one thing we know about the mod, it doesn't seem to be calculating it quite correctly, but we'll still use a seven food route any day of the week. I mean, it could be a nine food route, I'm just saying, <laughs> but it'll do. Now I have the time to get a second galley out in this city, which I'm going to do. That will give me some era score. Era score is what we're after. This is the main, main occasion, the main event we're after, just to push ourselves into a beautiful age of glory. There's a crossbow in this city now. They know, they know we're going to attack them, but that's fine. It's not a problem. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Tennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zersa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Joseph Bianconi, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke79. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!